Sub shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Dinner Hay as part of their very first custom monthly music review. This is for a track from an act named Hikaru Utada titled Distance and if we switch over to here uh, we have had the pleasure of I think listening to Hikaru Utada during uh, fan request live streams so there's just in case you're interested in that um, where fans can come and suggest tracks and, and and the live stream um that'll be this weekend there's one this weekend number 22 uh but anyways um we're gonna listen through this track from start to finish and we're gonna hear what we think let's do this oh, oh this is kind of dope i like the sound of the drums and the synths and everything and that cute little um There's quite a lot going on immediately, isn't there? Oh, nice work, that little bell tree going down the sides. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Interesting texture there. Um, also, yeah, I love the tone of that main melody there. Interesting placement of that guitar on the left side. Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting it. I did hear a lot of resonance in the mid and right. I'm um, just a really gentle beginning to this track distance. And there's a lot of presence of the vocals in the center of the mix, but also got these additional overdubs on the right side. And it just really fills it out and maintains the interest in it, you know what I mean? And just having that like chillness, that kind of um, neo kind of soulish kind of vibe throughout it, the city pop kind of vibe, am I correct or incorrect in saying that? Again, we've got these little bright little flutters and strums and everything like that, along with that original motif on like da 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 da. I don't know what that the synth or keys or something like that or the smoothness of it throughout. You know, we're at that two minute mark. I'm just wondering what we're gonna have next to kind of spice it up. And just the, the detail on the drums as well. I know I just look like I'm vibing to it. I'm just appreciating all the little intricacies and bits of nuance within it. I suppose this be a 16th note groove on the hi-hats. And there's a little bit of a shuffle to it as well. It just has a great sense of movement and pace. You know, sensational. 
Yeah, I like again how we're kind of repeating that did a little -ling -ling along the sides, um, but it's still unpredictable at the same time. It's like it's rare enough that you don't become bored of it, even if like it's also consistent enough that it's comfortable and you feel like you've returned home on that hook. It's kind of nice to have those little bits of English in there, that just sort of Japanglish that's going on there. Um, I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. Oh, I'm sorry, is there a trumpet in the background there? Oh, we're getting spoiled today, aren't we? Yeah, there we go. See, there's little things like that as well, that little drum fill that we had there just to kind of change up the overall pace of it. And because I think at that point, the producers might have appreciated, yo, we've had a lot of that kind of 16th note accent on the hi-hats with the chord notes on the kicks and snares and some offbeat kicks, but let's just make a little fill there, you know. With a limited palette on the kit, you really need to do, you need to spice it up occasionally, add a little bit of, um, a little bit of, um, a bit of extra intensity to it. Um, especially when the track is otherwise so thoroughly like it's it's it shimmers man Okay, so three or four different vocal layers now Oh I like the idea of like starting over. It's nice to have an English part at the end because like for me personally, I can't speak Japanese, right? So it's nice to have that accessibility there. We do have lyrics at the end kind of like provided by Dinahe, but at the same time, it's nice to have that midpoint. It's enough of the track to, it's enough of the track to understand what's going on. Because all of these are really long tracks. Like if you look at them, most of these tracks are like four to five minutes. It's very unusual. Often a lot of the stuff I listen to, unless it's like rock or metal albums, uh, where like, you know, for instance, Metallica in the mid eighties, like had like seven tracks, six or seven minute tracks regularly. Um, to be fair to Metallica, they had several distinct sections in each track with different themes, right? This is kind of more of like one sort of main concept or motif repeated throughout. Oh, fantastic use that upper head voice. That's what I was kind of looking for, like Breath of Fresh Air, that, yeah, I know I'm familiar with this, I'm surrounded by the music, it sounds pretty and charming and youthful. There's distance, but they still, um, they know it's not forever, but they still have that passion there, and then you just have that head voice, it's great. And a fade out at the end. Great, great track. I'm actually gonna give that a like. I really enjoyed it. I just want to keep track of the songs I've reviewed, you know. But um, stunning, stunning performance on the part of Hikaru Utada for that part. And I suppose we should have a look at the lyrics now. So we've got the lyrics here. I've just got them slightly. I mean, that if you're on a if you're on a PC, you'll be able to see them fairly evenly. But on a computer, on a lap, uh, laptop or on like a mobile phone, it might be a little bit difficult. But yeah. Also, if I make them bigger, oh no, that's okay. You know, can we go bigger than that? No, we can't. So that's probably the limit there. So we can have the cute little cat image here as well. Um, but Final Distance. All oh, right. So apparently there's two versions. Final Distance is like the slower version of this, more like a ballad. Distance is the one we listen to, but the lyrics are basically the same as I understand it. Uh, I could be wrong, but hopefully I'm close. You who gets hurt with a single word taught me what loneliness is. Yeah, because I think what I can tell from this track, it's about 
um, being being apart from someone, whether literally or like metaphorically, figuratively. I mean, you know, like how sometimes you get in relationships and then over time they 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 move away from you a little bit, and it's it's sad. You know, it's it's not it's not a fun time when that occurs. I get the impression listening to this that it could be either. You know, the principle is to try, but I would do it for you. When you can't protect, keep on trying, baby. They want to be together. We can start over. Even if you have been hurt, we can make this real. You know, I want to be with you now. One day, even the distance, I'll be able to embrace. We should stay together. After all, I need to be with you. Because this is the conclusion of my review of Hikaru Utada's uh, distance for this uh, custom monthly music review. This is Patreon video um, for Dinahe. Um, what do I think about this track? I mean, I, we've already gone through all I think it's about in the lyrics section, of course. You know, talking about how it's about someone who is in a relationship. There's some dissonance, there's some distance between them figuratively, maybe, and they just, they're, they're trying to sort of work it out and patch it up, and they're trying to communicate, yo, we can just start over and new chapter and everything, I need to be with you. So I think that's what the track is about, effectively, you know, there's a bit more to it, but, but yeah, again, you know, it, that's part of what I think will make this appeal to a lot of people, I think a lot of people will be able to relate to having that situation with someone so they'll probably be able to vibe with the song and the way that Hikaru Utada sings is fantastic so that always helps as well her vocal technique was splendid going really smoothly between her head and her chest and head voice especially at the end there with those higher notes uh, but it was also like a very rare thing and I think that's part of what I enjoy is when clearly capable vocalists don't just show off the entire time there's little bits of really kind of wild stuff at the end as if to say look i am capable of this and you're like wow that was a great way to finish it off you know as opposed to doing it all the time where by the halfway point you're like yeah i know what you're capable of none of this excites me anymore um the way she sang does sound um you know authentic to what the story was about it does sound like she missed someone but it was a very mature approach in the regards that i think there was a good emotional balance there it was just us coping with the situation and trying to peacefully resolve it you know um you know we, we we really want this person back but we're not destroyed by it and i think especially when you consider the the accompaniment which we're going to talk about in a moment that makes a lot of sense it should also be noted again that the going between the japanese and the english was flawless great performance for both languages it's not an easy thing to do hikaru utada nailed it so well done on all fronts honestly the vocals were spectacular um, the, the motif for the track I think was really great. I enjoyed listening to um, the idea itself is a great constant throughout the track. I would have liked more diversity or variety, but that's because I'm a dopamine fiend and I need stuff like injected into my brain. I, I, I'm really, really anal and pedantic about the amount of um, the intensity of the changes and needing constant adjustment in order to keep me engaged. I know there's a lot of people who enjoy this kind of motif, even if it's constant, because it supports Hikaru Utada's vocals spectacularly. So in that regard, I think it's kind of got a youthful kind of vibrancy, but it's charismatic, it's optimistic and hopeful, but you know, there's also like a kind of a, yeah, I know this might not work out kind of thing, but it's, I think it's mostly positive. And the accompaniment itself, the performance structure and arrangement going between those verse and choruses and reiterations of like the themes and hooks and those melodic sections and stuff, or those interlude sections later on, and just the double chorus or the refrain at the end. What more could you ask for, really? I think the walkabout pace was great. I think that the drums were interesting to listen to throughout, nice and elegant and, and um, you know, peppy. The main sort of synth key-ish melody, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. it might even been strings or something like that. You know, it's just it was just nice and, uh, again, charismatic and, and youthful and uh, looped incredibly well into itself. It was nice and pleasant and palatable. There was no semitonal chromatic issues, no tritones, obviously, or any kind of crazy stuff like that. You simply had someone who was going ba 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 bum ba bum ba bum, you know, it ba bum 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 bum, and then like there'd be call and response with like backing vocals or something. Which, while I remember to mention it, Hikaru's uh, the vocal, the backing vocals and the harmonies were excellently placed throughout the track. I enjoyed that we used them relatively sparsely, but when they did come in, it was more of a, like a synth pad kind of thing, where they were more sort of a soft layer behind her, um, or you'd have like this the vocals pan to the right, and then like a guitar thing on the left. Great use of panning, but we're not quite at production yet but the, the definitely the the overall composition and arrangement and like the the actual performance i would have loved just a little i don't know maybe we could have potentially i don't know if we could have 
put like I don't know like another lead instrument in there for like 30 seconds or something because I think it's part of the genre is having the vocals as the focal point so I don't think we could have gone the way with that so so fair fair play to Hikaru to die on that front actually I think for what it is the genre it is the type of music I think it's absolutely appropriate and you know I enjoy listening to this music even if I'm not totally super like like I don't think it's the kind of music to really pump you up, right? It's just something to sort of listen to and appreciate and kind of chill with. And I think there's a place for music like that, especially nowadays, which as I understand it is why there's like a movement towards this kind of music. People are just wanting to chill, man. They just wanted to relax. They don't want to have their heavy, intense stuff all the time. And then the production, the recording, mixing and mastering was splendid. Nice clarity to the vocals from Hikaru Utada. Um, the great EQing and actual recording quality there, you know, the other instruments were either sampled or performed incredibly eloquently. Lots of love for that. I, I don't think there's a, a, really a weak spot in the production at all that it's ready for commercial release, obviously, because it's done well. But, but also simply, I think it offers her best facets while also we have the situation where um, we had like, again, those guitars, the bass, the keys, everything else, the, the, the backing vocals, everything just shone. Great EQing all around the effects change on the various instruments were appropriate. There was there, there was some panning and like little bell trees and stuff like that. The automation, the game in the studio was on point. I was about to say it was minimalist. No, it wasn't, no. There was clear attention to detail with the panning and automation and positions and stuff in the mix, which is what I think was needed to elevate it. I think that's what made it shine particularly and it makes it pleasant to listen to both on headphones and also just speakers because that's important the thing to remember when you're producing a track is that you need to make it interesting and exciting for people regardless of what they're listening to and that's an incredibly difficult thing to do as a mastering engineer or a producer but they nailed it with this one nice and full in the stereo field as i mentioned in the frequency spectrum nothing was sort of resonant or weird and then finally, the, the limiting compression was absolutely sort of like solid, you know, like it, there was no breathing or anything. It was nice and loud without pumping. All in all, it was sensational, man. It was glued really well. I'm really happy with it. And uh, so that's effectively my review of Distance by Hikaru Utada. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show Hikaru Utada some love via the various social medias in their Spotify page and stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as they need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on. I'll catch you in the next SP Patreon. I'll catch you in the next uh, SP Patrons video. Spot hands out.